John Noe unveils Greater Than We Believe with your host, Stephen King. Well, welcome back. I'm glad you came to see us again. This is uh, Greater Than We Believe is the name of our series. My name is Stephen King. I'm the host. This is my friend, Dr. John Noe. Uh, we are putting on this series to um, help people understand uh, their Bible better. This particular uh, video today is, an, is part of an ongoing subset of that series. We are on number 150 of all of them, and this is number five of a set of nine videos that we're putting on. These nine are actually taken from a TV series that was done back in 2014 on uh, TBN, the Church Channel, right. and this was hosted by Dr. John, uh, excuse me, not John, Dr. Lynn Hiles, and uh, the name of the program was that you might have life, and he invited John Noe to come on because he was a, had read his book and was aware of his ministry and was intrigued, and they had a really great nine programs. They were so good that we figured we, you know, we really need to share these with you so that you can see what other people saw then. I'm a visual learner and I think maybe you might be too. So of these nine programs, mm -hmm. we have already posted the last four videos were those first four of those. Today, uh, number 150 is our uh, video number and we're doing number five of those nine. And so John, last week we were talking mm -hmm. about um, well, I forgot now what we were talking about, <laughs> but you brought us up to the point, and I think it's good for us to have some anticipation. So if you would, before we actually start rolling the video, would you give us some ideas or some clues of what we're talking about today? In uh, this national TV program, okay. this one, uh, Dr. Hiles and I discussed the question, was A.D. 70 really the second coming of Jesus Christ? <laughs> okay. And we look at the nature of Jesus' many comings okay. throughout both the Old Testament and the New Testament and discuss the means and manner of how he comes. Hmm. I think you'll find this quite interesting. Yeah, I think so too. I agree. So uh, let's not... Delay. <laughs> no delay theory right here. No delay. <laughs> Roll camera. <laughs> All right. Lynn Hiles Ministries presents Dr. Lynn Hiles That You Might Have Life. And here's your host, Dr. Lynn Hiles. Welcome back to the program. I trust you've been tuning in every week as we have been in uncharted waters uh, sharing some things that are probably challenging to your thinking. You know, uh, you know, I think probably first, when I first began to see some of these things, my first response was probably like many of you. I, some of it almost made me mad. I was like, uh, you know, uh, it, it almost made me mad because it really challenged everything I thought, yet it gave me such great hope. And uh, I would ask you to just uh, allow the Holy Spirit to be the teacher. We're not trying to convince you of anything. We just uh, ask you to at least be fair enough to listen to what's being said all the way through and see if it fits. I believe that God is a covenantal God, and uh, if we are preaching grace, we're preaching new covenant, we're preaching the finished work, at some point we've got to see that that old covenant ended. And so that was, for me, one of the great transitions that helped me move into an understanding of how this eschatology or end time things fit the paradigm of uh, it will answer so many questions for you as we get this stuff in the right time slot that will make scripture that did not fit uh, seemingly in the New Testament start to fit in the context that they're given. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, I have on the set with me again this week a, uh, a special guest, and he's been with me the last four weeks, and we're going to shoot a couple of more programs, so I encourage you to tune in every week. If you've missed them, you can go back to YouTube and watch them at your leisure to go ahead and get kind of some of the things we've already shared, because we've covered a lot of ground. But uh, John, Noe is on, John Noe is on the set with me again, and John is a, the president of Prophecy Reformation Institute. It's a conservative evangelical scholar, and he's a member of the Evangelical Theological Society. Uh, John has presented 17 theological papers on eschatological reformation issues. He holds an earned Ph.D. in theology from Trinity Theological Seminary and the University of Liverpool with distinctions. He's the author of several trade published books that you can get on Amazon.com, and uh, one of them is Unveiling the End, a Balanced Scholarly Synthesis of Our Competing and Conflicting End Time Views. That's the book that he's primarily sharing. Un unraveling. From. Unraveling, I'm sorry. Unraveling uh, the End, a Balanced Scholarly uh, Synthesis of Our Competing and Conflicting End Time Views. He wrote one called The Greater Jesus, The Perfect Ending of the World, Off Target, Peak Performance for Principles for High Achievers. Uh, other books are there available on Amazon. You can go there and get his books. He's also a screenwriter. He's an award-winning entrepreneur. He's a past 20-year member of the National Speakers Association. He's been featured on numerous television programs and radio, including CNN's Larry King Live and CBN's 700 Club. He's climbed mountains around the world and lives in Indianapolis with his wife, Cindy, who was a former state representative. And uh, it is a great pleasure to have you back uh, with us again, John. And uh, you know, I think probably people have heard me teach this, and they're thinking, well, there, is there other people out there that teach this? And uh, one of the things we found is there's a whole bunch that have started to tune in to our program and said, is there others out there? Yes, there is. And this is really a growing reformation, really. I, I mean, it's catching on. I believe that... Uh, you know, uh, people are looking for answers, and especially when a lot of this stuff that we've been told, dates keep on passing. I mean, just since I was a little kid, I remember when uh, they told us we'd never see the end of the 70s, and then 1988, Jesus was surely coming back, and then 1998, we were living on borrowed time, and then 2000, this is Y2K, and then when it gets beyond a 40-year generation, we start, you know, they try to fit the, this generation that Jesus said won't pass away to all these things be fulfilled into some futuristic generation, and then we stretch that from 40 years to 50 years to 60 years to 70 years, and when that passes, they'll jump to 100 because they've got to keep and, on. And yet, Lynn, there's only one generation. One generation. In human history that was Jesus's this generation. Yep. Only one. Yep. So was it the one he was living in and they were expecting these Had things to, to happen yep. as they were guided by the Holy Spirit into all truth and all yep. things that were to come? Or was it, is it some other generation many centuries removed from all of this. For that to occur, there has to be gaps, gimmicks, delay theory, uh, all, all kinds of suppositions. But in what we're teaching, it is exactly chronologically in time with what Jesus said would occur, including the appointed time of, of the, the end. end. Now, the question that we raised in the last program Go ahead. is, all right, given all this fulfillment, mathematically precise, sequential, chronological, literal fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Was this end proclaimed by Daniel, manifested by Jesus, affirmed by the increasing nearness uh, uh, statements uh, of, of the New Testament writers? Was this end, this destruction of Jerusalem uh, in, in 80, circa AD 70 mm -hmm. by the Romans, was this, the, was this Jesus' second coming? His return. Mm -hmm. Preterists say, the preterist view says, yes, this was the second coming. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the amillennial view says, no, it wasn't. Uh, it was a coming. Mm -hmm. It was a parousia, but not the parousia, not the second coming. Postmillennials are essentially affirmed about the same thing as, as the amillennials do. Premillennial dispensations say this wasn't even a coming or anything. Mm -hmm. This had no real significance. It was just a destruction mm -hmm. of a city, and that's, mm -hmm. and that's basically it. So is this the second coming? I, I have a little exercise I like to do with groups uh, sometimes, uh, especially with young groups, and I ask them this. I say, in your opinion, uh, over the entire course of human history, how many comings of Jesus have there been? 
Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, mm -hmm. over the entire course of human history, mm -hmm. how many comings of Jesus have there been? And then I give them an A, B, C, uh, D, E uh, answer format. Multiple choice. Uh, a, one, B, two, C, three, D, four, or E, more. Now some of them think this is a trick question. Mm -hmm. It's not a trick question. Mm -hmm. It's a sincere and most significant question. How many comings? One, two, three, four, or more. Mm -hmm. And it and they are amazed by some of the answers that some of their own people come up with. Now, which do you think is the answer that most people give? I would say they would say two. Correct. Why? Because we use first and second coming terminology. That's right. There's there's been nothing so ingrained in in, in we Christians than the second coming of yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ. But the biblical correct answer, Lynn, is E. Yeah. More. More. Billy Graham, in uh, one of his crusades in January of 2004, and in a subsequent article in Decision Magazine, entitled The End of the World, said about the second coming, he said, uh, of Christ, he said, it is mentioned more than 300 times in the New Testament. By comparison, repentance is mentioned 70 times. Baptism is mentioned about 20 times. So he concluded that it is obvious then that the Holy Spirit who inspired scriptures places great importance on the return or second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, with all due respect to Dr. Graham, do you know what the Bible actually says, actually mentions about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I know you know. Yeah, just one so, verse <laughs> in the book of Hebrews. Well, not even there. Okay. Zilch, nada. That expression is never used. The renowned theologian, George Eldon Ladd, in his famous book, uh, The Blessed Hope, the Blessed Hope uh, said it quite well. When he recognized, he says, the words return and second coming are not properly speaking biblical words, in that the two words do not represent any equivalent Greek words. None. Totally contrived. And they're never mentioned. Billy Graham said 300 times? Mm -hmm. Not once. The closest you can come is Hebrews 9.27. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. He will appear a second time. That's as close as you can get. That mm -hmm. does not say second coming. Mm -hmm. He will appear a second coming. It will appear a second time for a specific reason. To bear sin. Uh, but excuse me, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation for those who are waiting for him. Mm -hmm. for, uh, the previous coming that this was referring to was to bear sin. Mm -hmm. But this is to bring salvation. Now what that verse does is it highlights two of Jesus' many comings. It does not limit His comings right. to two. It never mentions second coming. Uh, do you have any idea? Uh, well, you, you mentioned the first coming. Mm -hmm. Many Christians have been told that Jesus' birth is His first coming. Mm -hmm. But do you know that the Bible never calls never Jesus' calls birth His first coming? You know, do you have any idea why? Because it was not. His because birth. it was not. Yeah. It was totally inappropriate. Yeah. The comings of Jesus, as we document here in this book, and I don't know if we're going to have time for it, in, in, and these programs are not. Run like a thread, Lynn, throughout both the Old Testament and the New Testament. I have documented over 30 of those. Yep. Some are visible appearances of deity in human form. Mm -hmm. Others are not. Mm -hmm. There are different type of comings for different purposes. For instance, Melchizedek when he meets Abraham, would that be considered a... That's one of them mm -hmm. that's pointed. The angel of the Lord mm -hmm. who receives worship and who is called the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, who was that? One like, like a son of man in the fiery furnace. With... Eusebius says that was Jesus. Yeah. Eusebius agrees with me. Yeah. That was Jesus yeah. in human form. Who broke Jacob's hip mm -hmm. and received worship mm -hmm. and blessed it? Mm -hmm. Angels don't do that. Yeah. When, when, when you see angels, you know, like in the book of Revelation, for example, you probably taught on this. Mm -hmm. when, when, when John starts to worship the angel, what does the angel tell him? Don't do it. I'm, That's right. Yeah. But this other angel, 
He does. He yeah. receives worship. Yep. He blesses. He breaks Jacob's, and, and many other examples. It's, it's just amazing yep. that they run like a thread throughout both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And that is why the Bible never uses language like second coming mm -hmm. and limits the coming of Jesus in any way whatsoever because it's totally inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And the promises of Jesus' comings are multifold mm -hmm. and unlimited, which is an interesting study. But that's why as George Eldon Ladd recognized, the Bible doesn't use it. The words return and second coming are not properly speaking biblical words. Hello. Yep. Red flag. Yep. Uh, in that the two words do not represent any equivalent Greek words. And yet, the, this second coming event is the controlling event of the four chief moments to which all other end time events are attached. Mm -hmm. Do you see a problem here? And that has resulted in Christianity being called, a few doctrines unite and separate Christians as much as eschatology. It's one of the most divisive elements in Christian history. Mm -hmm. Have we been guilty of traditions of men making the Word of God of little or no effect? Mm -hmm. I.e., limiting the comings of Jesus to only two times. Mm -hmm. When the biblical testimony is the comings of Jesus run like a thread throughout both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Some are for blessings. Some are for judgment, mm -hmm. and and different. Per, there there are comings that are promised, which which kind of fits in with Revelation one. I'm he totally, was is, totally and is to come, and and with the promised comings in Revelation chapter two and chapter three. Mm -hmm. so, some of those comings in Revelation chapter two and chapter three, you don't want to have happen yeah, to you. Yeah, you don't want him you, to come you, and take your candlestick. No, yeah. no, no, you don't. Yeah, you don't. You don't want him to come. Or you don't you want like him a, to spew you out of his mouth. Yeah. Or come on you like a thief. or yeah. That's right. But there are other comings that are, if a coming of Jesus happens to you in your lifetime, it is the ultimate, this ultimate supernatural experience. Mm -hmm. But if He comes to you in judgment during your lifetime, it's just the opposite. Mm -hmm. Just the opposite. Mm -hmm. But those comings of Jesus, and, and again, both in the Old Testament and New Testament, are for many different reasons, many different purposes, yep. and they're not limited. So let me see, see if I'm getting this right for our audience a little bit. So then this coming, and there was a coming yeah. in AD 70. We're going to make yes. this clear. Yes. This was the cloud coming. Yes. This was the birth coming. Yeah. The, and there are other comings for other Well, reasons. even during this period of time, he comes to the yes. guys on the road to Emmaus. Yes. He appears to over 500. Yes. He appears to the Apostle Paul. Yeah. I, I, my dad had an appearing of the Lord in his life when he got saved. The Lord appeared to him. And he, so there's multiple yes. appearing. So uh, this is probably the one aspect. He's still doing that. Of synthesis that really kind of uh, uh, will help, I believe, a lot of people to understand that we're not saying that, that Jesus is not still coming. No. In fact, just the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. We are saying, though, that, that some of the prophetic fulfillment uh. of, of this coming is not in your future. All right. This is a cloud coming. Yeah. He will come on the clouds. Mm -hmm. It would not be a visible appearance of deity because cloud comings in a day of the Lord in judgment mm -hmm. in the Old Testament where the Father was the implementing uh, agent of the, of the Godhead mm -hmm. uh, never was a vi visible appearance of deity. Mm -hmm. But there are other comings in the Old Testament that were visible appearances of deity in human form. Mm -hmm. And we talked about, about some of those. Yeah. Uh, Jesus tells His disciples that after His death, He says, for example, uh, in John 14, uh, I will not leave you as offerings. I will come to you. Mm -hmm. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Mm -hmm. How many times after His death, burial, and resurrection did Jesus come to them in the Old Testament, documented by the Old Testament, and they saw Him? Mm -hmm. Many. Yeah. How do you count or discount those comings, Lynn? Yeah. Which one of those was the second coming? Yeah. Or if you insist on, and I don't mean you, I mean you, I'm using you rhetorically, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, on, on Jesus' birth being His first coming, then by the testimony of, of the New Testament, His second coming, subsequent to that, is over. Yeah. Like when? Well, how about uh, like when He appeared to Saul on the road to Tarsus? That was subsequent to... Mm -hmm. Or he, he appeared to Thomas and said, put your, put your fingers in the hole. Yeah, how about that one? <laughs> yeah. Or when he appeared to John on the island of Patmos. Yeah. If, if, if you're going to insist on literal first and second coming of Jesus, and those are it, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. But the good news is gooder. Would, 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 I, would I throw you out of rhythm if I ask you a question on, you know,
One of the things that I hear people a lot of times disputing is when they, Jesus was ascending into the cloud and, and he said, uh, why do you stand gazing up? This same Jesus will come in like manner. What would you say to someone who asked you that question? This same Jesus. Well, that is Acts. Let's go there. Yeah. That's Acts 1.11. Am I throwing you out of your paradigm by doing that? Of course. Okay. okay. Because that's one of the biggies. <laughs> I mean, I've heard them trying to refute and say, okay. Well, this, it's it, your show. Well, yeah, you're my guest. <laughs> but I want to keep you on point because I know you. you no, that's fine. Uh, that's I know a, your rhythm and how you that's a, No, no, no. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, men of Galilee, this is Acts 1:11. Mm -hmm. Why do you stand here looking up into the sky? By the way, that's an excellent question for today as well. Mm -hmm. Because you know what most Christians are doing? They're standing there looking up into the sky. Eastern, by the way. Yeah. For some reason. Mm -hmm. This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come. And it's, my version says come back. Back is not in the original mm -hmm. Greek. And the reason back is not in the original Greek is because Jesus never left. Yeah, I'll never leave you or forsake you. That's what he said. Yeah. So, so we add these words. That's another, well, we, we won't get into a lot yeah, of that today, yeah, okay. but, but, but that, that's an improper translation. Yeah. We'll come in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. I want to profess to you that this was fulfilled a few years or so later when in Acts, for example, I already mentioned, Acts 9, as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I want to suggest that's the fulfillment of Acts 1.11. Mm -hmm. And there are many more. Mm -hmm. So this same Jesus. So, so, so what we're yep. talking about here mm -hmm. in manner is the means of Jesus's visible, physical comings. Mm -hmm. Not the manner of his invisible cloud comings. That's a different nature type coming. But the, and that manner is this. Jesus, who is in the great cloud of witnesses mm -hmm. that surrounds us, mm -hmm. has the ability in both the Old Testament, Lynn, and the New Testament to be able to c come out of the invisible spirit realm and manifest himself in the physical realm, do something, and then go back, de-manifest himself back into the invisible spirit realm. Now, does that seem hard to grasp? Not at all, especially if you I mean, there are probably people watching us who've experienced that. Well, angels have the same capability. Exactly, yeah. That's how he, that's the manner or the means that they come and go. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, that word in the Greek there is erkomai. It's not parousia. Mm -hmm. uh, and erkomai means come or go. Mm -hmm. In this case, where he was ascending, it was a going. Yeah. In this case, it was a coming back. Mm -hmm. But then he didn't stay. Mm -hmm. The only time Jesus came and stayed for a while was right here. Mm -hmm. On all the other comings, yep. it, this and is he the only spent, one. He stayed. Wasn't, he, spent he stayed. After his resurrection, didn't he spend, was it like 40 days with them after his resurrection? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So that, that was a fairly long coming. Many, coming many, many com and, and, I mean, and, and, and that was before this one. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and those were manifestations of Jesus in a human form. Mm -hmm. And, that, and that's the means and the manner of those kind of comings. Mm -hmm. Always has been, even back here. Mm -hmm. The ones that Eusebius says, the angel of the Lord appearing, mm -hmm. uh, appearing to uh, Jacob and breaking, him, breaking his hip, mm -hmm. wrenching his hip. Uh, here, appearing to all these guys. Here, appearing to Saul, appearing to John on the Island of Patmos. Now, there are other types of comings. Yeah. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together, there I am in their midst. That is not a visible appearance of mm -hmm. deity. Mm -hmm. And there are other comings. Uh, well, we're, get, we're beginning to get into the many comings. Yeah. Uh, we said we weren't going to do this. Okay. But, uh, but you asked for it. So. But I, I uh, that, just that, wanted them to see it. that, you know, that's part of the synthesis that you, yeah. you oh, do yes. that is uh, beyond what uh, maybe a preterist would. Oh, yeah. You know, so, so, so what I'm saying is this, the, 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 the so-called second coming is the big controlling event. It's a non-event. Mm -hmm. We take that off the table. Why? Because it's not biblical. Mm -hmm. What's biblical is cloud coming mm -hmm. and many comings. Yeah. Once you take us off the table, you open up a huge uh, 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 capability of dialogue mm -hmm. because this is the big impediment. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. 
And then can we, can, so can we synthesize some of the other stuff? Well, once you get this one taken care of, again, that's my, remember my second premise in, in my, my dissertation on, on, on uh, synthesis, that's mm -hmm. My first one was God's not the author of confusion. My second was the second coming, return to Christ, is a controlling, pivotal key event. Mm -hmm. So if we get this one straight, because everything else is attached to it, th yeah. then everything else will fall in place. Second coming is a non-event. Yeah. Biblically a non-event for reasons that George Eldon Ladd, you know, specified. Mm -hmm. uh, Lynn, this is a major breakthrough mm -hmm. that, in my opinion, has the potential of, of, of reconciling this area of eschatology that's called the, that's called the most divisive element in recent Christian history, mm -hmm. few doctrines unite and separate Christians as much as eschatology. Wouldn't that be something if we could get this straightened out? Mm -hmm. Start and bringing some of the camps together. And there's so much else that mm -hmm. we could get straightened out. Once, that, once that's taken off the, tape, off the table mm -hmm. of discussion and debate, then I, I, would, I would hope and pray that, that, that the coming together of Christians could be just monumental. And we realize, uh, you know, more about our once for all delivered faith. You know, Jude 3 tells us to contend for the faith that, that was, was once for all delivered to the saints. Mm -hmm. Well, when in the world was it once for all delivered to the saints? Mm -hmm. You're looking at it, folks. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. You're looking at it. Yeah. At the appointed time of the end, mm -hmm. prophesied 700 years before Christ that there was such a thing. 100 years later, Daniel's given this prophecy, lays it out, perfect harmony with the... Uh, uh, New Testament uh, statements of Jesus with the New Testament expectations and the increasing uh, nearness statements of the New Testament writers in perfect harmony with the fact that this is a cloud coming in judgment of a day of the Lord of which there had been many before mm -hmm. in the past. And, and the day of vengeance, wouldn't that be that? This is a day of vengeance, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, using, using the same kind of apocalyptic language that was used before for those type of judgments. Mm -hmm. You know, earth shaking, uh, yeah. stars falling out of the sky, moon turned to blood, uh, cosmic collapsing, yeah. you know, kind of language. Jesus is using that the same way that it was used time and again, used and fulfilled, used and fulfilled mm -hmm. in, in the Old Testament, that, that, that this is the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints, mm -hmm. for which we are to earnestly contend. Mm -hmm. now, now, not refute it, or not ignore it, mm -hmm. or not deny it, or, or, or not get upset by it. Right. This is our faith. And this is a lot gooder faith. Yeah. Again, that's not good English, but it's great theology. A lot gooder faith than we've been led to believe. A lot gooder. We're not serving an absent Jesus. No, he's yeah. never been absent. Yeah. He's, did, did he ever say, I'm going to be away for a or, while? Or a kingless kingdom. <laughs> or a kingless kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, or Israel's last day, or worst days are still ahead of him. Mm hmm. No. Well, that ought to be good news to somebody. That ought to be good news. Yeah. I would hope that that would be good news. Well, there's so much more. I mean, I mean, we're, basically what we're doing as we talked last night at dinner is we're putting up a Christmas tree, so, yeah. so to speak, and we're just putting up. Keep putting the ornaments on. And, 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 and then, and, and you've been doing some, some of that, putting some ornaments on it here yeah, lately yeah, yeah. In, in our programs. And we begin to put, but all the other pieces fall into place. There is absolutely nothing that I know of that contradicts anything that we've said. Now, there's people who don't believe it. Yeah. But this, all yeah. this, is historically documentable. Yeah. yeah. And, and as Klein, Bloomberg, and Hubbard state, and as I hope I overemphasize this, the historically defensible interpretation has greatest authority. That is, interpreters can have maximum confidence in their understanding of a text when that is based uh, uh, understanding on historically defensible arguments. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe this or not, it is historically defensible. Yep. And it's sequential, it's literal fulfillment, it's chronological, it's divine perfection, the same divine perfection that we see the yep. God of plan and order and purpose yep. and time frames in the in the covenant and in, in the creation of the physical material world. And he created this all through change of covenants. Yes, sir. And that's what eschatology is all about. It's yep. about the change of covenants. Not the change of cosmos. Yep. Even though it uses cosmic kind of language, apocalyptic language, which was used many times before and fulfilled and used and befo fulfilled before in Old, Com Old Testament comings of the day of the Lord and judgment. 
Jesus is using that the same way and utilizing the same agencies of foreign armies to, imp to implement. That's incredible. We're just running out of time. Take a moment to call that number on the screen. We're about to run out. Tune in again next week. If you're enjoying the program, write to us. Uh, hit us on Facebook. It's what encourages us and, uh, to keep on doing this. Uh, but tell your friends about us and tune in again next week at this same time. As we continue this conversation, you will be blessed. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.